Hello everyone and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4. Today we have a bit of a special episode. I'm looking at Aragon, which is not the nation that we were previously playing over with Serbia. Don't worry, that campaign will continue. We have lots of things in store. Today is more of, it's going to be a longer episode, more than likely. And we're going to be taking a look at how to get Aragon off in what I consider to be the right direction. Now, you'll notice it is the 13th of November, 1444. And the reason for that is I've already done a couple of alliances. We have sent off for an alliance with France, with Navarra, and with the Papal State. Now, Navarra, this is in order to get really good relations. We should be able to basically diplovasalize these guys, either by events, which I think is how it used to be, or by one of their mission trees, I think, pretty soon. We'll see how that goes. Now, a couple of other notes here are we start with Naples under a personal union that will break by event when we die. And we are, of course, 48 years old, so it won't be all that long. Usually, I think this guy doesn't have the best... Uh, lifespan in the game. It does tend to be relatively soon. So that's just something we have to have in the back of our minds. Now we want to keep Naples, but that will not be the easiest thing to do. We will have to deal with some negative consequences to keeping that. So this didn't used to be the case a couple of patches ago. It was relatively simple to keep Naples, and now it takes a bit more of an investment. We also have been rivaled, let's take a look here, we've been rivaled by Castile. So we rivaled them in return because, you know, why not? And yeah, I know, it'll encourage them to make alliances that don't like us, but we're allied with France. If As long as we can bring France in, what do we really care? So that's the idea there. And then we will be looking for complete control of the Iberian Peninsula. We want Portugal, we want Castile, we want Granada, we want all of this, and we want to be moving into north of Africa. So that's sort of the overarching goals. Just looking at a couple of other things, then we'll start, we'll hit the uh, play button here and actually start the game. Um, this is how I set up my estates, and this is what I think is probably good for for Aragon at the beginning. We have a fair number of, mon of monopolies granted, and this will decrease our monthly, but we also start with a lot more money, 247 ducats, which is a pretty good thing. Nobility loyalty is very low, because we did get a general because of that estate that allows us to grant generalships, which is the nobility officer rights. I think a free general at the beginning of the game is very important, and the reason is... We start at Miltech 3, but Miltech's 4 and 5 should follow relatively quickly. If you're spending 50 military admin points in order to get a general, that's going to be a fair number of months delayed getting to Tech 4, which gives better morale, and getting to Tech 5, which gives a better unit type. So both of those are critical to get in the early stages. Now let's just go ahead and start, <clears throat> and we'll go up to plus 3. Ooh, the Infantes of Aragon. The Infantes of Aragon are the brothers and sisters of King Alphonse V of Aragon, second ruler of the Trastamara dynasty, which was established in the country after the compromise of Caspa in 1412. They're also cousins of the Castilian king Juan II, and conspired since early in his reign to control him and seize power in Castile, with the support of a faction of relatives and allies among the Castilian nobility. The situation deteriorated from 1437 when a new civil war broke out between the faction headed by the Infantes of Aragon and the one headed by Alvaro de Luna and the heir to the throne of Enrique, which is now coming to a resolution. We can either get permanent claims on Castile, or we can have Castile remove us as a rival. Castile gains a stability, which I don't really think is worth it for us. We're actually going to go with the permanent claims. So we now get claims on everything Castile owns in perpetuity, which will tie into our mission tree, intervene in Castile, where if we own these lands highlighted in purple, a little bit hard to see there, but they are highlighted in purple there, we will uh, basically get a restoration of Union cast a spell on Portugal, and be able to move down our mission tree. So we are going to do this militarily. We could hope for the Iberian wedding event instead, but I tend to be of the opinion that, um, well, it's more fun this way anyway, at least for me. I, I'm not really a peaceable player of many games, um, let alone this one, so we'll have to see. And, okay, Erigny's succession. Let's hope for a smooth succession. Very well, that one's basically saying that things will get interesting for us when we die, which, yeah, I probably could have guessed that. Uh, and we did also ally the Pope. Now, this is in part because... Oh, jeez, we should have been... See, I'm making a mistake here. Uh, always remember to hunt pirates in your main trade node, especially if you are right next to the Barbary Pirates. And this is in the Valencia trade node. Let's go ahead and do that here, and this should... Make it so we don't get pirated quite as much. A little bit too late to get that going, but um, yeah, that hurts. We'd probably be positive right now. They recently um, doubled the penalties for devastation, so 
we're getting quite a significant debuff from my mistake. But, you know, every game you play, you make mistakes. Oh, come on. Oh, that's because it's the Genoa trade node. Well, everything is rated. That's just going to be how it is for right now. That's fine. So, let's take a look and see what we need to do in order to bring in the French. We could do it right now. And try and crush the Castilians right away. Now, we'd have to fight against Brittany, Navarra, and Portugal. Now, Navarra is allied to both of us, it would seem, which does, of course, mean that they will come in on the side of their defensive ally, not their offensive ally. And I think we're going to do that. We're going to promise French, the French a little bit of land, and we're going to declare this for the conquest of Mercia, because it's down here in drylands. I think it should be just fine. We're going to do that in just about a month or two, and I'm not going to be using our ruler, despite the fact that he is an amazing general, because I don't want him to die sooner. If he dies in an early war with Castile, we're going to have a bit of a hard time. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we are going to go over here. We're going to recruit the free company, because uh, I know it, it's something that a lot of YouTubers do, and they do it for a good reason. Well, I guess I do it for good reason as well. It really does help you with that early war, just getting a little bit extra mileage out of your manpower, which is pretty low. It's pretty low for us at 8,887. It's pretty low for our opponents as well. So we can definitely use that to our advantage, but they will go into debt to get um, to get mercenaries. And so we need to have mercenaries as well. So let's call in France. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go over to Alvacenta and Mercia and bring this down here. Now, we're going to be playing this more or less on three is my guess, and let's go ahead and make this an objective for Armagnac. And that's 21,000 Castilians right there. That's their main army. We need to defeat this, and okay, because we need to defeat this, we're going to temporarily uh, assign Alphonse V, and then as soon as this battle is over, <coughs> with our victory, we will send him back to... oh, come on please with our victory. Yeah, this is what I get for not allowing the free company to have better morale. There it is, there's the win. Good, and these guys are already locked in. Another 3,000. The issue is going to be the 15,000 Portuguese. I really don't want to fight, but we should still outnumber. Our morale is not very good, though. Okay, well, that's one way to take this entire thing on the chin. If we look right now, we've already taken 14,000, well, 11,446 losses to the 22,655 losses for our enemies. We're going to wait for this guy to lock in his movement. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> look at that. We're already negative on our manpower. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's go ahead and assign the French to get Toledo. And they're taking down Brittany, which is good. So they're taking down our north. We'll get some money out of that. We'll get some more reparations and some other things from that, <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and remove Alphonse V, thank you, no leader, and move over to start taking Toledo down. Okay, so to do that, let's go here, and let's take our smaller army, and go with them to Toledo, and once we capture Albacente, if we need to, we'll put Alphonse back in charge of an army, and we'll go back in, okay, that's scary, that is very scary. Man, doing this without the French being down here is um, maybe something I should have considered. But, you know, don't count yourself out. It's still it's still winnable. Many situations are very, very winnable. And you just need to um, believe that they are and play smart. So we'll see. We will see. Now, one other thing that we're going to do is we're going to allow attach. This will tell any um, computer armies... Oh, come on. That siege was going well. Why did you do that? Uh, um. Okay, back down. Good, that keeps the French focused on us. Uh, I've noticed that they will tend to do that if they're already at war. So the French will back down, they won't fight the English. This is good for us. You might think that it's bad because the English have rivaled us and now the English are stronger. But, even with this, I tend to see that the English lose uh, the continent eventually, just not right away. And in the meantime, France is weaker because they don't have Bordeaux, they don't have, you know, all of this stuff in northwest France. So we're just delaying that, we're delaying their power spike for a little bit, and it should be just fine for us in the end. I um, really think it won't be all that bad. Now, which one is the... is it here? Yes, that's the 
Brittany, Britannian? Eh, whatever. Brittany's capital. And as soon as that falls, we will piece them out. I don't want the French distracted over here anymore. So let's go ahead and take war reparations, which will go entirely to us. And then we'll also take some money, which will go uh, not even mostly to us. But there we go. We're out of the war. We're at negative two. That really doesn't matter because we are swinging things in our favor. And a lot of that's coming from this blockade, which we don't currently have a navy to fight. So and we'll, we'll have to see about fixing that in the future. But... I'm a firm believer in win on the ground first, then win at sea. Because if you can't win on the ground, it doesn't matter if you can win at sea. Um, even if I'm going into Africa, for example, if I'm attacking into Morocco, if I can't, if I control the strait but I can't beat them on the ground, what's the point of me controlling the strait? Right? So we build up our armies, we build up our country, then we build up our navy, and we use that sequence to allow us to win the game. So the French have arrived, they are smashing. Castilian armies. Castile, Castile is entirely out of manpower that isn't mercenaries, which is very good for us, and that means that all of those losses they're taking will decrease the size and strength. What the heck? Oh, right. Yeah, we're doing that. Eh, oh well. Okay, let's go down here and get that, that, that. Good. We will go over and siege Portugal as well, um, but not quite yet. I want us to be able to have the war goal to get ticking war score from that, which is counted here. We're currently losing that, negative four, which is unacceptable. We should just have Mercia. Now we have the Fort of Toledo. We have some protection here. And most importantly, this is the Castilian capital. So we're well on our way to winning this war, uh, despite taking a couple of really tough fights at the beginning. It really has turned in our favor so far. Let's just play smart, make sure it stays that way, make sure that we don't lose anything stupidly. And we're going to tell France, hey, come over here if you can and siege down this boa. Now, they won't always listen to you, but they often will, and often is good enough for me right now. So, there are a couple ways to do the peace deal. We can look for releasing some other minor nations, uh, specifically, yeah, Leon, which would weaken the Castilians quite a lot, or, for example, Galicia in the northwest. I tend to not do that just because I'm a greedy bugger and I like to have more land under my control at the beginning. But we do also have to remember that we don't have the most admin points right now. Uh, you'll notice I did give religious state. This is because, yes, it does drop us down to 25% crown lands, but with a two administrative advisor, uh, actually, we should probably hire another advisor as well. Let's go. Not the best to have the yearly prestige plus one, but we need all the admin points we can get. And even with an advisor, even with that estate that gives plus one, it still isn't even that high. It's kind of um, unsatisfying, I would say, in its current state. Now, I don't want to take that fight. Let's go around here. If we have to take it, we'll take it. But I'd rather the French keep beating themselves up against the Castilians, because really, that's no skin off my teeth. That's <clears throat> sort of just all good for me, the longer that happens. And let's see. I'm going to take Nevada. How does this impact our mission tree with Navara? Uh, okay. So we don't actually have to vassalize them. We just have to own it. And we get a lot of claims that we already have. It's another way of getting the claims in case you decide to be peaceful with the Castilians, which, yeah, we're not, we're not going to do that. So let's look at the size and strength of the French armies. They have been relatively smacked by the Castilians and the Portuguese. <clears throat> and if we need to peace out early, we will. But I'm hoping that we don't. I'm hoping they can kind of recover... And honestly, considering the amount of strength that the French have lost, it's kind of a wonder. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Sina. Mm, this is going to make things hard. Ordinarily, I wouldn't balk at this. We just say it's ours and it will always be. But when we die, <clears throat> excuse me, the event with Naples will give them liberty of desire. And we want to minimize that. So, actually, let's just give them Sina. I don't matters all that much. Um, yeah, it'll make things harder because they don't control the mountain fort there, but uh, I hope you don't roll that event, shall we say, and it's about the best you can hope for in this situation. Uh, okay, so we don't want hot to fall. Hmm. Oh, lots of clergy events. We don't necessarily need the ducats right now. Let's take the loyalty, and when the siege of Evora, uh, of Evora falls, 
we will be able to be in a decent bargaining position before about 30-40%. Usually the AI won't even piece out that much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, about 33%. We only have 10 reasons to spare uh, for the actual peace deal, so we can't grab that much land. And let's actually... Is this greedy? It might be a little greedy. Let me try and see if we can kill some of these smaller armies that are just wandering around. Because if we can, I mean, why not, right? It's basically free. There it is. And it also, as long as we don't leave too much space, will really mess up AI pathing. So, it's a second benefit. Okay, the French should have rebuilt their armies at least a little. No, nope, not really. It's kind of upsetting. Oh, it is always a little bit goofy when the uh, AI nations that you expect, that you see, are always strong. They're always winning their own wars. And they have a remarkable way of losing the ones that they're helping you on. So, uh, it's a little goofy, but such is life. So, let's see. We should also be improving relations with Naples just to protect ourselves against when we do eventually die. And because I want a free diplomat, <coughs> let's go ahead and do this. You don't necessarily need a free diplomat all the time, but I find it very useful when you're at war. Just in case you need an emergency peace deal, in case things go very, very wrong, or they're about to go very, very wrong, and you want to peace out before your armies get completely crushed. Uh, something like that usually is, is what I have in mind. Um, okay, speaking of, we are going to be peacing out relatively soon, I think. I don't think we want to go in entirely in this war. We're just going to weaken them and strengthen our own position. And with the Siege of Evora... Let's see, is there ongoing battles? No, there's not. Um, there is, but it's not the primary participants, so... Actually, let's wait for that. There we go. Well, I shouldn't have. It did decrease our war score. See, we're negative for manpower right now. We can't take all that much with Admin anyway. Let's see what we can get with the 62, 23, and... The provinces that we need to own for intervening Castile are these. So let's see which of them we can take, starting with Mercia to get us a uh, border with Granada, Sinta, Toledo... We can take Toledo, it's very nice. I really want us to be able to take Cuenca, and we're two reasons away. So we're going to stay in the war until we can take Cuenca. Even if that <coughs> means that we have to fight one or two more times, or that the French have to fight one or two more times, um, just because I think that'll be really helpful for making this continuous, for making it uh, a bit more solid of a choice. Okay, this... no, oh, still not. Can you guys stop losing fights? It's really just making it harder for us to peace out. Okay, let's go ho over here and support them, otherwise the Castilians will beat their own. Second fight. Now that, yep, they're backing away. Uh, I thought that would be it. Okay, it's alright. Uh, let's actually go up here. If we can even just sit on Burgos, that should allow us... You know what? I kind of want Navarra as well, just so we can finish that. Matters too much. Ah, heck with it. I don't really want Navarra right now. It's fine. It's not like they really accomplish much. And okay, this costs us 172. <clears throat> we could do more. We could do more. We could do more. We could do. How much would it take us to get Soria? Mm, it's a fair number of reasons. Okay, we'll take this. It doesn't even give us that long of a piece either. If we look, it's until 56. So we can follow up on this with the second war. And look at this, we're already getting stronger. Already doing well. Uh, making our way downtown, walking fast, and bound and all of that. So let's go ahead and get rid of the free company, just for a little bit. And yeah, this did kind of make the French angry because I promised them land and I didn't give them any. That's okay, that's perfectly fine. They're going to break that alliance and we're going to replace it with Austria. There you go. <coughs> so... We still have strong allies, we're about to go back down to our maximum number. And in case you're worried about the second fight, I mean, we took a pretty good fight at the beginning, and we were fine. This this money situation will be fine as well, it's absolutely okay. Don't worry about it too much. The important thing is starting to break the Castilians. They're gonna go into their civil war, they're going to have problems over and over and over again. The weaker we can make them, the better off we are. So there are 26,000 men they have right now. They should not have the second time we take this fight. So, um, okay, no point in incurring favors of the French. They're just going to break their alliance. 
Let's try and do this with Austria. And excuse me, I have a bit of a cough. <coughs> um, the royal marriage from France, by the way, won't keep them in the alliance. It will just give us an additional Diplo slot taken up. So that's why I'm not really worrying about that too much. Um, and let's go ahead and improve here as well. Green favors. Yeah, I mean, they do have a lot more military strength than we do, but that's kind of to be expected. And we should actually be drilling this army because it is larger, which means that we get more tradition from it. So in case you don't know about this, the military professionalism, the army professionalism, goes off of the amount of your force limit that is drilling. And it's either force limit or it's active military, but I'm pretty sure it's force limit. Um, that's drilling. So if we have more of our men drilling, yeah, we have to pay for more of them. But it also does help us out a little bit for our army tradition. And right now, this money, this burn rate, is entirely fine. Negative 0.8 ducats a month. We have lots of grants and monopolies. They'll come back around. We have a fair number of forts as well, which we don't need all of. But I think for right now, we will keep... Um, okay, and this should be fine. This should be entirely fine. Yeah, we have a lot of Neapolitan cores. But... Uh, it's not really much that we can do about that. Now, our goal for Naples is... Okay. Hmm. Fair enough. Uh, our goal for Naples is to integrate them, but we can't do that until 1492, the 3rd of March, 1492, just because there's a um, longer time for that with personal unions than there is with vassals. So that's sort of the explanation there. And let's go up to four, just because I do want to do this one uh, pretty far into the game, just to show maybe the second war with Castile. And yeah, we... Quite possibly could have gotten more out of the first war. But the French were really pretty flagging. Our own armies were pretty flagging as well. And we may as well wait for the Castilian Civil War. I mean, yeah, I, I kind of miss the days when they started with the 0, zero, zero. That would have been pretty nice for us, to be frank. You made playing Aragon um, very good if you were going into the aggressive military expansion route, which is, of course, what we're doing here. Uh, yeah, let's see. That's fine, that's fine. To form Spain militarily, we have to own all of this. Isn't even all that much. Yeah, okay. Make an alliance with Navarra. Don't go ahead and break it this time, but they will. Next time we go in against next time we go in against Castile, they'll break it then too. It's fine. Are there any other alliances that are worth us going one over? Hey, we could ally France. Look at that. <laughs> well, they love us again, but they don't trust us very much. That will come back to bite us a little bit, but let's go ahead and get it, just because, I mean, why not? Worst case, we'll have to pick between them and Austria, and that should be fine. Okay, new technology, up to Miltech 4, very nice. I'm going to make Toledo into a state, and do this, and we are also going to do something else, of which you may or may not be aware. Of course, if you watch a lot of EU4 on YouTube, you should be aware of this, but we're going to drop our autonomy. can do that clicking province by province, I prefer to do it this way. Two, three, boom, boom. Um, okay, and we need to have our army maintenance back up because we do have a rebel faction, the Castilian Separatists, that will pop soon. We also did have a lot of autonomy in our northeastern provinces. This is something didn't used to be the case. Was introduced with uh, basically Castilian, not Castilian, but Spanish sort of events and, and uh, flavor DLC things like that. It really kind of bugs me <laughs> to be honest, just because uh, I mean. Aragon has such a strong, had, well, had such a strong starting point, and it's just been nerfed over and over and over and over and over again. Um, we're going to stand these grasslands, drylands, that's fine. Uh, yeah, let's just stand here, because if it's a, if they pop on the fort, then we'll get Defender anyway. Oh, that's the worst case. Yeah, okay. Really wish we could have taken that with both armies, but we can. And let's go over here, Renaissance, Catholic Zealots in Capitanata, that's fine. Naples has already taken care of them. And we will accept this, that we don't take military debuffs, particularly in morale. It's fine. Wish we had a bit more manpower. Let's take a look at the Castilian army. Still at 26, interesting. Well, I guess usually people will build pretty close to their limit over time. But the AI probably hadn't yet, so when we took some of their land, they almost certainly kept a bit of force limit. 
Um, in other words, they weren't at their cap, so they might not have it drop. Speaking of, we can now field 30,000 men. And we will. For the second fight with Castile, we will outnumber their armies. And we're still going to try and take cautious fights and make sure that we're doing things very slowly, very particularly, and having good engagements. That's how you win. Slow and steady. And then when you are confident, uh, very fast, but only after you are confident, not before. So, Brittany, Navarra, and Portugal, we are re-allied with France. We need to start currying more favors with them again, because we'll exchange those for trust to make them able to come into our wars again. If we were to go in against Castile right now, just take a look here. Yeah, France says no way, because uh, one, they have a truce, but then we have negative 19 reasons from trust. It's not something we can't overcome. In fact, right now it is overcome from the added seed toward enemies plus 40, because they really hate the uh, Spanish this game, but that's not something you can rely on either, so uh, we are going to try to do our best to fix that, at least as soon as we can. We are leading the world in technology, 344, which is pretty nice. Can't always expect that. Ooh, look at that, Bourbon, 434, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, Italy will go up pretty quickly. Some of the better attribute rulers at the start as well. Go up very fast. That's fine with us, we don't really care. Uh, philosopher, we don't need that. Let's take the money. And because we are plus five, now we're going to go ahead and get a discipline advisor and an improved relations advisor. Um, I want an early reformation to shatter the unity in Europe. So let's go ahead and push reform desire. And I'm kind of impressed we still haven't died yet. Of course, having said that, now you will. And Joan de Trastamara really sucks. I would disinherit him, except then we run the risk of getting someone who isn't a Trastamara, and I do still want that same dynasty. May not be the most important thing in the world, but I, I think it's, it's what we want for right now anyway. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go up by one more here, and I absolutely hate asymmetrical armies, so let's go up by one more there. Just building up a little bit of our military, and how many years do we have left on the truce? We have five years. That's enough to get a little bit more manpower. We could also... Uh, we could need a... Well, we need more men, but we also need a, a general. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a general. You don't always get what you ask for. Sometimes it's just it's a little bit goofy. They're like, yeah, yeah, no. But we'll see what we get. And then we'll... Okay, um, that's not what I wanted. All right, that's fine. That does get us toward Miltech 5 faster. And even if we wait out the truce a little bit, what I want to do is I want to go up to standard pikes before Castile. And I want us to be able to fight them when we have better infantry. And the reason why, Latin Medieval have one offensive morale, one offensive, sorry, one defensive morale. And when we go up to, my, prefer my preference is a longbow, that little bit of extra shock can get you a lot of extra kills in even fights or in fights that otherwise would have been even but are now no longer. So that is what we want. We want to take fights that will just kill their armies faster than ours. It's kind of the point of the point of wars in the game is uh, if you beat your opponent you win. <laughs> right? So that's that's what we want to do. We also will take advantage of it if they go in and attack Granada. I don't know if they will. Granada is allied to Morocco and Tunis and Castile is not exactly feeling their best at the moment. So that would be another opportunity Let's go in against them. Their manpower recovers, I swear. AI manpower stuff is just, it's goofy. But, yeah, it's fine. Alright, this is up by 152. We do want to maximize that just to keep them at plus 200 for as long as we can. Um, anything past 200 doesn't show up, but it is still calculated. So, if I have plus 300, it'll count as plus 200. But if we get negative 100 by event, then we're still at plus 200, right? Because it's the sum that matters. So, that is good, and we'll probably go with the Grand Company for our next Mercenary Company. Ooh, no. Free Swiss Guard. A five shock ruler with two siege early on? Yeah. If that guy is still there, we will definitely hire the Free Swiss Guard. They're small, but their general will help us so, 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 so much. It'll be pretty incredible. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just let this keep going. Let's go up to five, actually, because there's really not that much to do right now. We're going to keep an eye on our estates. I do want to siege. Ooh. Okay, our heir died. We have no heir. Hey, we didn't have to disinherit, right? Uh, 
And on Monarch Death, Death we still get a Trastamara. Or, we might even get a Habsburg, which I would say would be an acceptable trade. Uh, is that an heir? That is an heir. 235, and it's a female. Alejandra de Trastamara. So we could have probably gotten the Iberian Wedding. Um, just because if we have a female ruler, Wall Castile has a male ruler. We still actually might get that, in which case this is still better for us, because we'll have a better balance of power against the Castilians. But, I don't think it matters all that much. Truce with France is up, that's fine. We're going to nearly be able to increase their trust a bit. Not a heck of a lot else going on. Burgundy is at war, of course, but that's to be expected. Ottomans are at war, of course, but that's to be expected. Uh, kind of surprised that Venice hasn't done anything, and... Okay. Let's see here. It's fine. I don't want to invest anything in that right now. And we're just building up a little bit of a surplus in our treasury, because uh, we will probably be negative during the war. France against Provence. Let's... Uh, okay. Fine. This is actually a nice way to gain back trust. We're going to go down to four, because that's the most I ever feel really confident about doing this with early on, and is there anyone for us to actually fight? Not really. It's all siege down. Oh, that's too bad. Because um, we could get a little bit of war score, and we're going to do that by blockading just the single province of I, which we actually have to be here to do. Eh, it runs the risk of losing those light ships, but it's fine. Light ships. The economy on light ships, unless you know it, exactly is very hard to have return on investment and right now we're getting a little bit of war score at least we should be which means that yep yeah, which means that they will have additional trust uh i don't want to lose the stability and let's recall our diplomat with naples that yeah, should be fine yeah if they end that war and withdraw their fleet we're in some trouble but if they don't we should be fine so yeah, heck with it. We lose that, we get trust with the French. I think that's worthwhile anyway. <clears throat> 8,000 men. And Castile's at 27. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. The Free Swiss Guard will help us even things out, and while we could seize land right now, we, we're not at peace, so we can't. So that is the only remaining obstacle. Okay, there's the peace out from other people there. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more score. Did also get a little bit lucky that our larger fleet was able to defend our smaller uh, smaller fleet a little. Should be quite all right. Anyway, I think if we, I just I'm a little bit afraid of our ruler dying, and my policy on this is always when you're not comfortable with the nation that you're playing, make sure you're in a solid position in the early game, and then push, 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 push in the mid game. So you have a good late game. That's different from other nations like Serbia. I've played a fair number of times. And what I'm doing right now in that campaign, going into Bosnia, crossing into Italy, moving from there, it's a lot more stressful. But I know that I can do it, more or less, because I've done it a couple of times before, which uh, it's not necessarily cheating. It's not necessarily... It's, it's hedging my bets. I'm doing something. I'm pushing harder on it than I did in previous campaigns, where I did take a bit more time. But uh, it's something that I at least know is theoretically possible. This really sucks. Um, let's just take the prestige ship, it's fine. And we can go up. Yeah, this is perfect. Temples, standardized pikes. Now we're going to go up to longbow. Our men are stronger, better, faster. Uh, and we can grant another general ship, which is exactly what we needed. 513. Uh, the five's in the wrong spot. Fire pips don't really do all that much in the early game. But this will actually, losing the ships will increase our war participation as well. So all of that is good for us. And we should be ready for the next war with Castile and their allies pretty soon. Just Brittany and Portugal shouldn't be the end of the world. And let's take a look. There. Yeah, we'll still be outnumbered locally, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and stop raiding. Jerks. Um... Let's see, Free Swiss Guard do still have a 4-5-1-2. I don't know why they switched the order of those. But it's uh, dead now. I don't exactly know why. That's fine. We outnumber the Castilians on their own. We also have, I'm almost certain, better generals than they will be able to 
muster. And as long as we're smart, this should be just fine. Especially with the French on our side, since they are up to 23,000 men as well. And is there anyone else we could bring in? No. Distant war. Yeah, I mean... It's not ideal. It's very much not ideal, but... That's what we have to do. So we are at peace now, which means that we can seize land here. We're up to 30. We have no ill effects from that. And I'm not going to pay money. Okay. We lost our female heir. And we have a male heir. So, okay. Look at that. We went from having high odds of getting the Castilian to uh, Castilian wedding, Iberian wedding, to pretty low odds because now both of our heirs are male again. Okay. That's our first little bit of renaissance. Well, second little bit of renaissance, I guess. Barcelona and Valencia. Cardinal spreading institutions is very nice. You can't always rely on that. And, okay, we did get favors, not trust. But those are basically interchangeable. And let's go ahead and do one, two, three. This leaves us with ten favors to call in and nearly repaired trust with the French, which uh, will have to be good enough. So, let's see... We want to start off this war a little bit defensively, which is a little goofy for an offensive war, but I think that's definitely what we want to do, and let's just see if we can... So Asper for, for War gives 20 additional reasons for the Austrians to come in, which will not be enough, I think. Yeah, that's not enough. Let's just keep gathering favors. We'll trade it for trust. It'll be alright. And keep in mind, we do get the French vassals as well, so they're 23,000, which actually, right now, should be more like 32,000, 29, interesting. Um, we'll go up a little bit as well, just because of their vassals. Give me one second, I need to sneeze. Usually I uh, will cut that out in post, but this is a longer video, and I don't quite have my notepad with me, so I'm not sure exactly where in the video that was. Uh, yeah, so, please that. Uh, Pardon the intermittent sneezing. Uh, let's see. Let's gain two more papal inter... Uh, okay. Whoa, one side of truce. They had a truce with us? We're still allied. Yep, we are. Yeah, okay, that's fine. This is why we build up additional money. We are losing money now over time, and we lose the truce in December. So let's gather near Toledo. I'd like to strike... Well... This is stupid. I just, I just said we should do this defensively, and I'm sitting there going, no. Okay, we died. Okay, have a regency, but it's a queen consort regency, so we can still declare war. We need to boost stability back up to zero to avoid things like disasters. And a one, two, five, at least that does get us some nice military power. Where's the last will? Here it is. Neapolitan succession. So, <clears throat> that gained them 50% liberty desire. Right now they're at three, they'll become slightly disloyal because we've kept them very happy. We should be able to do this just fine. Let's lose that and let's... Oh, we can't... Why can't we... Hmm. Right, personal opinion. Very well. Let's develop Naples. Boom. <coughs> Developing will give a little bit reduced liberty desire, but it does strengthen them, which counteracts that, so be a little careful with this. <coughs> Excuse me. We do need to have a stronger military. And here's the Syndicat of Remensa, which is another one of our mission trees, the War of the uh, Remensas. We need local autonomy above, minimum is less than 10%, stability at least 1, which the... This is the thing, that autonomy is going to take forever. Look at that. Okay, so we can either allow it, um, gives good to produced, ooh, that's actually pretty good, but we get plus decentralization, okay, more peasants than I want to put down, um, interesting, <coughs> nobles revolt, we get a 564 ruler, 28, uh, and proclaim a peasant republic. No. No. We're going to allow them to form their little syndicate, which will give us plus 10%. Goods produced seems good anyway, to be honest. Uh, 
Yeah, let's take a look at this. Syndicate Romanza, there it is. Yeah, that's alright. That's fine. Goods produced plus 10 is a really phenomenal modifier, and although we do now have more problems with autonomy, it should be okay. We won't have to fight them over it right now, anyway, which is good enough for me. So, this time I think what we want to do is we want to move with the French and just sort of do one big tide. I'm going to declare this for Madrid. We're going to take Madrid. And where is their new... Oh, come on. Let's see. Leon? No. Is it Valencia? Ah, Cantabria. That's their new capital in the north. And it's behind the fort at Burgos and the fort at Navarra. Combination of those is a little bit... Ooh! Iberian Wedding. Here we are. Ow. Male... Ah. Queen Regency. Okay, so we can make Castilla Jr. partner. We have weakened them a little. It does kind of make this war... Well, I don't know. We look at forming Spain diplomatically. Abentec at least 10, which is not going to be for a little while. I do think it was worth weakening Castile. So, we can make him a junior partner. 14 noble levels in Mercia. Where is... Mercia? Mercia? Right here. Let's go stand on Mercia, and we'll bind their dynasty to ours. Noble rebels are usually comparatively powerful. Good leaders. So, we want to take that fight defensively. And, okay, here we go. So, we have intervened in Castile. Uh, restoration of Union CB on Portugal, who is allied to England. We can do that fight. In fact, let's do that fight right now. And go ahead and get the Portuguese Union as well. Should get that. Good. And we need to be increasing... Okay, so that's from the Iberian Wedding. That will fall away. Um, let's go ahead and rival Portugal, and there it is, Restoration of Union, take the capital of Lisboa, and call in the French, and we shouldn't even have to lift a finger for this one. Let's go over to Evora anyway, but the Castilians should be able to beat this. Oh, it's what a turn, what a turnaround, look at that. Yeah, this is nice. Uh, truce with Navarra is up. They're a vassal of Castile, so we'll own them anyway. And we could call in the Austrians. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, look at this. This will go very, very fast. So actually, let's drill our armies, because why not? Why not? Just do it in a safe position. So let's go here, there. This way we're protected by our own forts, and we'll have a little bit of warning. If we are going to have our men attacked. And okay, so if we have Portugal now, we don't need to focus necessarily on going colonial because Portugal and Castile should do that on their own. And we'll take over all the colonies when we integrate them. So they'll do that for us for free without an investment into those ideas. Uh, some, well, not always. Sometimes they don't if they're subjects, but very often. And we can start looking at taking Granada, which we do need to. Yeah, over with. So let's build a spy network here, and let's stop carrying favors there, because we still want that one free diplomat, which can be a little bit annoying. But we have a lot of things going for us right now. A lot of things going for us indeed. So, 28%, that shouldn't last that much longer. Okay, that's fine. There's the Siege of Avora. Two siege rulers, ah, uh, sorry, two siege generals early on in the game. It's just so incredibly powerful. As soon as we can get England out, this war is ours. It's just a matter of when we can get England out. They're negative 23. Shouldn't be that long. Yeah, shouldn't be that long. If we can take the port at Calais, then that should finish it. And by we, I mean our allies, as we don't lift a finger. So let's actually drop that guy away and increase the size of our natural armies here. Now let's go up to four... Take the military power. Let's go up to 10 there. Uh, this will just increase our balance of power relative to our vassals, 
which is a nice way of making sure that they don't decide to go all murder stabby on you and become disloyal in increasingly annoying ways. Naples will be an issue over and over again. Um. Hmm. We'll support loyalists. And now we don't have to worry about it. It's a little bit overdone. We don't necessarily need to do this. But I think it's probably a good idea. And... Oh, come on. So peace. Oh, oh, yeah, one more reason. Uh, let's actually wait here. Because we could get war reparations from England as well. Which will help our economy just a bit. Once we get this union with Portugal... Um... That's good. Power projection above 50 gives you an additional monarch point a month, so that's very nice. And, okay. Haven't gotten enough to finish that. And we haven't integrated Naples yet. We need to have a larger fleet. We also need a larger fleet maximum size, up to 30, which is currently 27. And that'll give us our claims in the south. So, we have a couple options. We can go into Italy, but Shadow Kingdom has not yet fired, so all of that is part of the HRE. Other than the Pope, who is our ally. I think our next war is going to be with Granada. I think this is the way to go. Uh, da, da, da. Let's get claim here. Good. We can also do this for Castilian claims, which should be on you know, all of it. But I'd rather have my own claims as well and give that land to ourselves. So, looking at our first reform, I think we're going to go with... Oh, well, that's pretty good. I think they've done a decent job of making a lot of these more attractive, which it certainly didn't used to be that way, with Noble Officer, officer Court. Hmm. 1509. For ducats, this is pretty steep. I'm just going to ignore it. I don't feel like going into debt over that, which we already have to watch out for, to be frank. Okay, so we have the port at Calais. We should be able to get war reparations. Yep. And a couple of ducats just to add insult to injury. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get the. Oh, come on. Enforce union. Union with Portugal. Now, our coalition will form, but it's only Portugal, which means it actually can't form because anything underneath uh, three nations won't be able to form a. Um, a oh, what's it called? Coalition. So that's it, and we will take a lot of their money. This will put them into debt, which we can then pay off with their money, which will make them happier with us. Kind of, kind of goofy. Uh, it also just weakens them, which is good for us. So, these are pretender rebels. That is kind of an issue. Let's go over there and help the um, Neapolitans. Ordinarily, we don't want to have to do this, but pretender rebels can cause a lot of interesting trouble. Portuguese Liberty Desire is high. We've done this. Let's complete that. We need to improve our relations with Portugal very quickly. If we die while a personal union member is at negative anything, even one, relations, we lose the personal union. So that is the risk. And the reason that we took it right now is because, well, our queen consort won't die. She'll give it to our heir, Baron de Trastamara. So that is a little bit of a different situation. We have a lot of time, basically, before we, in theory, could need to... Oh, come on. Are you not going to auto-transport? Come on. There we go. Are these all galleys? Or all transports? Wow. Okay. Take the other one over, too, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get raided while we do this, because our fleet is, uh... Out at... Well, doing other things. It's okay. Let's allow attach. We need to not let Naples fall. So even though it's less than ideal. Let's take that fight. Neapolitans are arriving. And there's the win. And okay, they got it from there. That's fine. Let's go back. It costs us a lot of manpower. But it does keep our personal union safe which is the biggest thing for us right now, is to make sure that we can manage all of this, because there's a fair amount going on right now. We have a lot of diplomatic loose ends. We have control over Castile, Portugal, and Naples, and it's a little bit much. We're a little bit weak for this. We could also enable support loyalists here, but it wouldn't make them entirely loyal, so 
I think we're better off just improving our relations anyway before we start paying Brunswick. Ah, yes. The the mighty nation of Brunswick is, of course, the, the natural overlord of the Burgundian lands. That's goofy. Okay, well, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. We could go in. No, we can't, because that's a vassal. They, Castile should integrate Navarra pretty soon, I would imagine. And we'll go in here pretty soon. They're at war. Morocco and Tunis are at war. Would they all come in? Uh, declare war. Yeah, they would, but quite frankly, I think we're fine with that. Let's go ahead and do that. Come this way, come this way, and wars will also be good, generally, for... Oh. Come on. So many rebels. For keeping your vassals loyal and happy, because it gives a plus 25 relations bonus. It won't be... Ooh. Pasha. Austria is no longer the emperor. This is a weird game. Okay. Uh... How close are we? 385? 380, yeah. I don't want to pay the additional tax for these, but I think we just wait. I think we're going to get the Renaissance pretty quickly. And let's declare war. First on Maria. We'll conquest of Maria for ourselves. There it is. And where is my... There. Let's do that, do that. Should be just fine. If we, if we get this territory as well, we'll get that little bit stronger again. It'll be easier for us to hold on to our personal unions. And also you can see the immediate relations jump with Portugal. So if you just go back a couple of seconds and take a look, it was a lot more negative than it is there because we all of a sudden have in a war together plus 25. <coughs> that is binding us just that little bit closer together. Okay, the Ottomans in Tunis. That's a surprise to nobody. And we can do Renaissance soon. Good. We've still spent nothing on our navy, and I still think this is a comparatively good decision. Now, is it the best case situation? No, because we ordinarily want to be blockading all of our opponents, but we're going to siege down both of these forts, so then what can they really do? Right? What can they really do against that? Um, other than retreat across the strait. But that shouldn't have been able to happen. They only managed it, I think, because they were black flagged, which means they can ignore normal movement pathways and requirements. Oh, don't do that. Stop it. God. They're all sitting there going, yeah, let, let's put 45,000 men on the already conquest province of Maria instead of sieging down the mountain fort right next to us that we haven't yet taken or engaging with the uh, Grenadans. Okay, well, let's still finish up most of the Reconquista. We should be able to siege land See, not siege, seize land as soon as this is up. And the other thing too is the the weaker our uh, subjects become, the more easily controllable they become. So having their units die instead of our own is actually a, a double-edged win for us. So that's pretty nice. And we should get this pretty soon. And then we'll go over, we'll clean up all the Tunisian men on that side. Yep, there's the siege over here, because I'm kind of tired of them having men on this side of Iberia. Come on, come on, come on. And there it is. Oh, really? Fine, take Malta. I'll just take it back from you. It's kind of upsetting, but we'll have to pay for it in Diplo points again, but we won't have to spend more admin. Works for me. It's good enough. Ideal? No. Doable? Yeah, I'd say so. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Let's go ahead and spread ourselves over to this. And there we go. Now there's nobody on our side of the strait. We can really just sit on this as long as we want to. Um, yeah. Portuguese troops are disloyal, that's why they're not helping. It would be nice to get them to be loyal. 55, we are actually going to enable support as well. Now we have the Portuguese on side. It's a little expensive. Yeah, that's why we're negative. But it will also weaken their armies, which will then decrease their liberty desire, and it also helps win our war. So I don't see a lot of downsides to this, necessarily. Yeah, it does make us weaker in the eyes of everyone else when our personal union members lose their troops, but not by very much, because who's really interested in this right now, anyway? So um, I, I should have said no to that. We would have been okay. 
It would have sucked. It would have taken us longer to get Naples back on side. But it would have been okay. So that's probably a mistake. Probably would have suggest making sure that you don't do that yourself. If you're using this as any sort of uh, I guess template, shall we say. We should also be able to get a Papal bonus soon. Morale of Armies is usually the one that I go for, but I think we actually want to go for Diplo Rep plus one and Annexation cost neg 10, although it won't last long enough for us to integrate things. Might want to sit on it and then use that when we are integrating Naples, which will probably be toward the later part of this video. It'll probably be toward the um, really the end of what I want to do with this today when we can integrate Naples, Castile, Portugal, places like that, uh, which we could inherit if we die as well, but the chances are not going to be great. You should be able to see those now, I think. Cool. Oh, give me that. It's not the best advisor. In fact, I, I basically never do these. There's so many mission claims these days, it's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, 0% chance of inheriting. 0%. And... 0%, only possible after 92. Okay, that, that's fine. We're not too far from that. And we are getting more feudalism, or renaissance rather. As soon as that goes in Castello and Khativa, that should be a lot better for us. Good. And we do want to go into national ideas pretty soon. Frankly, with the number of personal unions we have, I might even take a look at influence. Uh, we don't have a lot of vassals, so the vassal stuff really doesn't help that much, but the Liberty Desire Neg 15 does help, and Diplo Annexation Cost Neg 25 is worth its weight in gold. Um, okay. Mm, that is pretty nice. That is pretty nice. Let's actually take the Prestige. I think we need the Prestige right now. Mm, what kills me about Influence is that it's just it's so situational. Once you integrate your personal unions, the only thing you need from it is this, really, in my opinion. Um, its bonuses aren't the best, its its uh, interaction with other idea groups isn't the best either. It used to be better, I think they've been slowly nerfing it over time. And that's just kind of upsetting to me, but <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so let's go this way, let's see if we can piece out Morocco, or do we need to take another fort? Oh, we can, look at that. Uh, we can nearly get money from them. Yeah, we can get money from them. Nice. War reparations, please. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now it's just us, Granada, and Tunis in this war. Tunis shouldn't stand all that long against our vassal swarm of our own, <laughs> which is a little goofy, but it does make me quite happy. And we do need to peace out so we can seize land again. I think this is really, really powerful in this patch. You'll start getting more government reform which is crazy good. Government reform wins games and can really make a huge, huge, huge difference uh, when you're playing, particularly in the early to mid game, where you need those bonuses from government reforms to help get that little bit of an edge against the people that you're fighting against. So that is definitely something we're interested in. And as soon as Tillism, uh, Tillimson, oh, Plumpkin, except a different culture, interesting, falls, we should be able to get Tunis out of the war quickly. Only 13,000 men, zero manpower. They just do a very costly war of their own. We might actually be able to piece them soon. Yeah. Just because of their own military power, it's pretty low. Whenever people have armies that are, well, whenever AI nations have armies that are smaller by significant margins than their force limit, they get negatives to staying in war because it's, it's the AI weight saying, hey, we're not as good at this as we usually are. Uh, which, you know, it's not exactly good for them. And it increases their judgment that says, okay, we could possibly lose this and very quickly. So it does quite make a lot of sense. Go ahead and embrace and get that and do this. One, two. Nope. No, 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 don't be dumb. Ooh, gems in Barcelona. Nice. So if we did this right now, it cost 563 and we need 131. Yeah, that actually works. We can do that. It's fine. Um, we're not going to take more land than we have the ability to pay for, which is what's really key. Go ahead and grant a generalship, and then that should recover very soon. And our new generals, I mean, that's why I think this is such a massively good... Look at this, 15415 shock, and we haven't paid for a single one of these two-star generals. 
it's just it's awesome it's amazing <laughs> it really is very good very good indeed okay let's go over to Toledo let's smack those guys around a little bit and uh, this is the this is the moment where we have to decide I'm actually really tempted to go instead of with influence because we could do that for a second idea with admin tech 7 going for something like quality because we get better infantry we get better Navy as well we get some discipline um, I think that could be good does it actually have interactions with diplomatic or influence rather no ah, well, can't get everything you want uh, here's the question what do we need those men to fight because we're not actually currently fighting anything ourselves uh, man, this is tough this is really tough see we're more ahead on mill tech as well okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go in for quality and then we're gonna go in for influence and by that time we should be able to start integrating a lot of our uh, personal union members and keep in mind too technologies tick every I believe 13 years so 26 years and we can't start integrating Naples until 92 so we'll hit we'll hit admin tech 7 before we can even do this uh, it's really not that big of a worry so we can save for peace we can we wanted to have them return cores, but that costs us Diplo points. I don't feel like paying that. So instead, let's just get war reparations and buckets of money. Buckets of ducats right there. All of it to us instead of our vassals, even though we did nothing for it. And that will be the war with Granada. We'll take their money as well. 70 ducats. And I'd say we're looking like a pretty good Aragon at the moment. Now, we haven't gone in. We didn't do what used to be the... Oh, man. Uh, what used to be the meta strategy here, which was going for Constantinople and just doing a no Cassus belly war against Constantinople, taking that and making sure that the Ottomans can't get it. But um, I don't think that's the worst. I It always seemed a little bit gamey to me that you could really do that. Uh, so not my, not my cup of tea, personally. Let's go ahead and seize land. Let's do an agenda from the Diet, since all of our factions are pretty loyal. Disability 3, no, nope. I'm paying for that. That could be good, except we need the military points. Let's go for Valencia, having a dock. And now let's go ahead and build it. There we are, should be good. And we could also build one temple in, in Barcelona. I'm not a big fan of building temples. Uh, well, churches, rather. I don't think they tend to pay off. Unless they're above point two. really is sort of my break point for it. Ten, four, ten and 4, and this is 28 out of 29, which is about as high as we can reasonably get. We could also disable supporting loyalists there, disable supporting loyalists here. Both of these guys are very loyal now, and we get a bit more money, up to plus 3.28 per month. I'm quite happy with this. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's actually build a bit more trading. And take a look at what else we can do. So the Aragonese Navy, kind of disappointing that we can't get that yet. That's sort of our next goal, because we want the claims on the Barbary Coast and Algiers. Issue is naval force limit, which they haven't yet unlocked the way to increase that, which is shipyards, Diplotech 8, take a little bit of time. We haven't grown enough to get those claims for free on our own. So that is a little bit confusing as to what to do there. Let's take a look. Shadow Kingdom has fired which means we can go in if we wanted to after places like Genoa. I think that's going to be the goal, because we can fabricate claims on Genoa proper, on Al uh, Albenga and Corsica, and taking Genova will allow us to get a lot of money from the Genoa trade node, which will funnel right through from Valencia, all of that, into Genoa. We'll control those two nodes decently early, and there we go. Ah, look at that. Navarro was in, and this gives us... Ooh, free claims. I love free claims. Good. Now, most of these we already have, except for ones that are owned by France and Soluzzo. So, yeah, okay, that's really not going to happen. That's fine. Uh, if we complete the wars of the War of Remences and have total development 600, then we can finish the Crowns of Iberia, get some modifiers to the end of the game, which would be very nice. And let's just take a look at a couple more things. Actually, you know what? I'm willing to say that this is a good enough start, because we beat up Castile. If we hadn't gotten the Iberian Wedding, we had a plan to do it again. 
We were able to get the PU over Portugal. We've maintained our PU over Naples. We had a couple of little foibles along the way, like having to give up Messina, which really kind of sucks, and I wouldn't do it in hindsight. And having to give up as well uh, Malta, which, again, not ideal. But we have a decent army. We have a good spot diplomatically. We have allies with France and Austria, which is very nice, along with the Pope. And pretty soon, we're going to be able to start integrating. We're ahead of time on technology compared to much of Europe. And I think this is a good spot. So if you... If you're at this spot and you're wanting to go into something like North Africa, try and get your mission claims. If you can't advocate them yourself, that's fine. I'd suggest go in for Genova first, especially if they have weak allies, which at the moment they do. They're only allied to Siena. It's a lot of money for minimal effort, which is sort of the early game goal, is get a lot of money. Don't have to expend that much effort. And then you should be able to just send your vassals like Castile, well, personal unions like Castile, Portugal, and Naples after Morocco. and. I mean, I can't imagine Morocco will be able to stand up to that right now. They don't even have any allies. They have 25,000 men. Castile has 26 alone, 14,000 from Portugal, and another 14, 15,000 from Naples. So even if they do need a little bit of help, great. We have our own 28,000 men already and decently full manpower pool. So we should be able to go into, into North Africa. We should be just fine there the second we want to. And I hope this helps. I hope this is a nice look at Aragon for anyone willing to uh, or interested in playing that nation. Thank you guys for hanging around and taking an interest in other games than War Game, which is sort of my my normal uh, content. It I love playing U4, and I'm always happy to do it with you guys on Discord or uh, you know multiplayer, single player advice, other videos like this. Just hit me up, send me a message, and uh, of course, if you can, like, share, subscribe, Patreon, and all that sort of nonsense. And that is how tiny little channels like mine can, uh, can grow and become something good.